Hello, everyone, and welcome to the iSystem webinar series. Today's episode is about Infineon Tricore Aurix TC3XX HSM debug and timing analysis. First, you will learn about the hardware security module, or short HSM, what it is and what it offers. And then you'll see a live demo in WinIdea, where we show you how to debug the special core and perform the timing analysis using two methods, using instrumentation of the HSM code and trace using MCDS data trace and using the sampling based profiling approach. My name is Sabrina Kisslinger. I'll be today's moderator. Today's speaker is Manish Kuma, who will lead you through the technical presentation. Hi, Manish. Thanks for being here. Hello. Hi. Hi. Manish is application engineer at iSystem. His previous work experience in the automotive industry as an embedded software developer and system engineer makes him best understand the issues of software development and user applications. That's it from my side. Over to you, Manish. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this iSystem webinar. Today's topic is debug and timing analysis of Infineon Tricore Oryx TC3XX HSM. Here is today's agenda. I start with an introduction of the Oryx TC3XX HSM and we'll have a glance at the HSM debug system. Briefly, we'll talk about what HSM debug system offers. Followed by that, I will provide an overview of WinIdea HSM operation and configuration. Subsequently, I also explain how WinIdea demo mode is useful for HSM core handling. During live demo, I will show you debugging of HSM core and definitely the hot topic timing analysis of the Oryx TC3XX HSM core via the first one is instrumenting the HSM code and trace using MCDS data trace and the second one how an idea sampling based profiling approach is useful for cores like Oryx HSM and at the end I will conclude this webinar. Starting uh, with a brief introduction of the Oryx HSM core. So it's a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M3 processor with up to 100 megahertz of CPU speed. Basically, it's an optional hardware security module of the Infineon Oryx family. As you see in the picture, HSM is connected with the device via the SPV, which is system peripheral bus. As a system on chip, HSM is a bus master on the SPV. You see the bridge module in the picture. So the bridge module acts as a firewall so that HSM internal resources are protected from access by other masters. P and D flash of the HSM is shared with the device, but definitely can be protected via an exclusive access from the tri-core and other masters access. The few benefits of the HSM core for the customers are, first one is, uh, Protection against logical attacks could be debugger protection, secure boot communication, tuning protection, authentication, etc. As you know. Let's talk about HSM debug system. So the debug system consists of flash patch and breakpoint unit, FPV, data watch point and trace unit, DWT, and the room table. This debug system provides features such as read access to HSM boot room, read write access to HSM local RAM, read write access to HSM core register or bridge module register or any memory mapped peripherals. And this DWT modules provides four, hard, four comparators which can only be used as hardware breakpoints. At the end, I wrote in red, no trace capabilities. So for the clarification, Oryx HSM core does not contain any units such as ITM, instrumentation trace microcell, ETM, embedded trace microcell, and the TPIO, trace port interface unit. So this means our Infineon Oryx TC3XX HSM core has no trace capabilities, but this webinar says timing analysis of Oryx HSM core. So at this point, I would say just stay tuned and wait for the live demo part where I will show you 
how you can do timing analysis on Oryx HSM core though it does not have any trace capabilities. Now let's move to WinIDEA HSM operation and configuration. Before explaining WinIDEA operation flow and configuration required for Oryx HSM module, it is worth mentioning that Oryx devices has several sensitive modules or areas such as boot mode header or UCBs which could lock the device permanently when they are configured incorrectly. So WinIDEA does it best to prevent locking. In our WinIDEA, we have a security checker module. So basically what uh, security checker module does, it analyzes the download files at download to prevent misconfiguration of MCU, which could result in incorrect boot or bricked MCU due to disabled debug periphery. If a violation is detected, it simply rejects, rejects programming or modifies data to keep the device unsecured or allows the download. So it totally depends on how have you configured the WinIDEA security checker. It acts as per that. So in short, WinIDEA security checker performs the required important check and in case of any issues, displays a warning message in the WinIDEA progress window. Now theoretically talking about WinIDEA or XHSM operation flow and configuration, which you also see as a step in the presented slide, you know. It starts with WinIDEA workspace creation where an individual application is defined for tri-core and HSM. Initially, HSM core is just observed, not activated. UCB programming is disabled too. Followed by that, a download is performed and uh, you can uh, verify the tri-core application start point. While download, you will see that uh, verify error message for UCB areas. And uh, at this point, you can ignore it because we have disabled UCB programming. Now after uh, verification, you know, you can enable UCB programming and uh, at this point of time, you will need another download. And after this download, you, you must go to WinIDEA UCB plugin uh, pan and you must uh, validate all the downloaded content. And if everything seems, seems okay, then uh, you can activate the HSM core and you can launch HSM core through WinIDEA primary instance. Now you have la launched the HSM core, so you, you go there and just perform attach. And after performing attach, HSM core is ready for run and debug process. So these steps are just the um, theoretical explanation, but uh, definitely if uh, you are facing any issues, then uh, we are glad to uh, help you out. And uh, we have got vast experience, so we are always uh, there to help you out. Just uh, you have to write an email and uh, or you can just contact us and we will be there for you. In this slide, I would like to talk about an excellent feature of uh, WinIDEA, which is WinIDEA demo mode. So while working with uh, Oryx HSM, known fact is how a minute mistake could lock the chip. Keeping in mind this use case, our WinIDEA demo mode feature is pretty helpful here. Basically, WinIDEA demo mode demonstrate WinIDEA functionality to a certain extent without any iSystem blue box or target connected. So I would uh, say it again, without any iSystem blue box or target connected. Using this feature as a uh, code is downloaded to PC only, critical UCB content or download file content recheck is possible using memory view. And uh, definitely uh, this reduces the risk of locking MCU. So um, while working with uh, Oryx HSM module, we always recommend to use WinIDEA demo, demo mode where you can uh, recheck all the download content. And if everything seems okay, then you can start working with the real hardware and the blue box. This slide is all about uh, tool setup, which I will be using for uh, live demonstration part. So I'm using Infineon demo board, which has MCU TC375X. The demo board is connected to IC5700 with Infineon DAP-E ActiProf. I will be using EMEM TCM tiles for trace. So trace recording will be very limited, whereas definitely you can use upload with sampling method also, which could, be, uh, which could help you for a longer trace, but definitely depends on the use case. But in um, here, I would request you all uh, to visit our uh, website or YouTube webinar channel uh, to know more about uh, Oryx tracing or advanced use cases. So 
you visit there and then you know more about Oryx tracing. But uh, here I have shown you the tool setup which I will be using for this live demonstration part. Next three slides uh, are part of live demo, but uh, in order to avoid back and forth between win idea and slides, so right now what I am doing is I am explaining the next three slides and uh, later on I will open win idea instance and uh, I will be uh, running the uh, applications and will show you the uh, timing analysis results. Talking about debugging HSM core, then when I open WinIdea, then I will uh, show you how to open watch window or how you can open disassembly window or how you can perform a step or a step over, how you have to set a breakpoint and definitely the important one, uh, H Oryx HSM module offers um, DWT module which has four competitors and uh, how you can use these four uh, hardware competitors as a breakpoint. So when I open WinIdea, then I will demo demonstrate these things as a part of debugging of HSM core. So the uh, next two slides would be pretty interesting for many of us because uh, we are going to talk about uh, how to perform uh, timing analysis uh, on Oryx HSM core. So the uh, two approach we are going to discuss, first one will be instrumentation of, of the HSM code and trace via MCDS trace and the second will be sampling based profiling. So let's move to the instrumentation of the HSM code and trace via MCDS data trace. The question which uh, comes in our mind will be why do we need this and uh, if we need this then how do we do it? So in general speaking why we need this then I would answer like uh, yes application software running on HSM core could be with or without OS, but time measurement of running task or ISRs or enable or any function in general, you know, is always a point of interest during software development. But this is a pretty generic answer. If I dig deep and look for more uh, reasonable reason, then I would say, especially during the boot process of the application running on the Infineon tri-core might rely heavily on cryptographic functionality by the HSM core. In such scenarios, the HSM core can become the bottleneck for the application and it might not be clear where all the time is spent. So by giving these reasons, now we know why we need this, but the question comes, how do we do it? So the handiest method or easiest method if uh, um, trace is there, but we know that uh, Oryx HSM core does not have any trace features. So an instrumentation based approach is an alternative here. The idea here is to use HSM bridge module. Basically using this HSM bridge module, we can create a memory space and after that, use the HSM bridge module to write into global LMU RAM of the Oryx and then record the data access via the SRI bus observation block. So the whole concept is here using HSM bridge module create a memory window and using that memory window you write it to LMU RAM of the Oryx and using MC, MCDS data trace basically you are recording all the data accesses made by HSM core to the LMU RAM memory region. This slide uh, shows also shows the steps which has to be done within WinIdea uh, to perform uh, to use this approach. So first one is um, HSM code instrumentation then we are going for iSystem Profiler XML creation and later on WinIdea Analyzer configuration. So as a part of HSM code, in, um, code instrumentation, so we are creating a memory window using HSM bridge module. Then we are selecting um, memory address of the host, so somewhere in LMU RAM. And then we are marking the entry and exit of HSM function. Uh, function. So basically we are instrumenting it. Now the, as for the next step, then iSystem Profiler XML creation. So we are creating a profiler underscore hsm.xml file. Then we are adapting the task, mapping the core and uh, definitely expression of the address. And then we are adding that XML file to our WinIdea so that WinIdea is uh, aware of all the this XML file and all the task or all the functions which is going to be instrumented and then you do analyzer configuration so basically you go and uh, enable OS objects and then definitely you have to uh, configure the SRI bus uh, 
and to trace out the host memory address which we are defining here and then if you run the analyzer then our end goal is uh, to get something like this where we are able to see the um, running tasks so definitely this is a faked one task a and task b and we are instrumenting uh, on hsm core and then we are uh, tracing it out uh, via sri bus uh, i mean we are accessing all the data accesses and then we are uh, putting in our profiler timeline and same you can see here this particular address which uh, which is defined as a part of this and this is coming from HSM and then we are getting a result so this is our end goal uh, and uh, which I will be also demonstrating the same when I open the WinIDEA instance now moving to the uh, sampling based approach First, I'm going to explain uh, what exactly sampling-based profiling means and uh, how it can be useful for course like HSM, which does not have any trace capabilities. Actually, sampling-based approach obtains data by sampling a specific memory locations or the CPU program counter, meaning the debugger reads out these objects via the debug interface. The obvious advantage is that this approach does not require any dedicated trace hardware, such as a spatial emulation device and trace adapters. But um, I would like to make it very clear here that uh, the idea here is not to replace real trace, but it can be mainly used for uh, stat analysis, like only for statistics. The first use case is function load analysis. So by sampling the PC of the profiler calculates how the CPU load is distributed across all the functions. The result is basically a CPU utilization percentage number for each functions. This load distribution is both reported across all the taken sample in the statistics view and also as a load over time in the timeline. Here for the timeline, a sliding window averaging approach is used. The second use case works similarly, but instead of the PC, which means program counter, here we sample OS running task and running ISR variable. So the result is an OS task and ISR load distribution. The display is again as statistics across the sample and also as load distribution over time. So the idea for these two use cases is that you run the sampling for a relatively long time like until you see the statistics number kind of stabilize this measurement may not be 100 percent exact measurement but it gives you a very good indication of the load situation in the in your system this should allow you to judge if your application is running correctly or not the third use case is completely different if you may already know the already existing extension to win idea that is DAC idea GUI so basically the idea here is to build a kind of oscilloscope for data signal um, in our system this uh, the main intention here is to monitor the data signal over time so such sort of analysis uh, is possible on oryx hsm code using sampling based profiling approach now let's go to uh, win idea and uh, there I will be demonstrating everything and uh, I will show you how to do it in win idea. So let's go to win idea. Here we are at uh, win idea. I have uh, already opened win idea tricore instance, which is a primary win idea instance in this case. Applications are defined here for Tricore and HSM. You can enable and disable UCB plugin by going hardware options. And if you check this, then UCB programming enabled. And if you uncheck, then this disabled. I have already done it. So I have disabled for security reasons. You can enable and disable WinIDEA demo mode from here. If you just click, then WinIDEA demo mode enabled. Once you have WinIDEA demo mode enabled, then you can go to view, debug, and you can open this memory window. And after download, you just write your address and you can check the downloaded content.
WinIdea security uh, checker options are available here. Hardware CPU options and go to debugging. And then these three options you have reject programming or allow programming or modify write data to keep device unsecure. So it depends on you what you select. As I have already performed all the WinIdea configuration and operation steps, so I'm not going to do it again. So here I will just start with a simple download. So this is my application entry point. Now I will be launching HSM core, so debug core and HSM core I will launch. Just for uh, your convenience and visualization, I have put uh, the Tricore WinIdea instance and HSM instance side by side. And now I will perform an attach operation on this HSM core. And now I will run the Tricore application. So you see both cores are in running state. Both core are in sync, so if I stop here, then HSM is also stopping, and if I run this, then HSM core is running as well. So, and uh, this is valid vice versa as well. Now, let me show you how you can perform debug on HSM core. Using view debug option, you can access all the call stack, disassembly, core register, or memory, or SFRs, all these uh, plugins from here. If you want to set a breakpoint, then directly you can click here and you can set a breakpoint. And if you want to do a single step, then you can uh, click on this and then you can perform single step. If you want to step over, then click on this and you can do step over. I have already told you during a theoretical explanation that DWT module of HSM core also has four hardware comparators, which you can use as a hardware breakpoint. So you have to go to debug and then hardware breakpoints. You can use this uh, four hardware comparators to uh, set a breakpoint either at an instruction execution or for any variable. So suppose I want to set it for um, some uh, function entry point. So let's say here, and I want to set whenever HSM task A is being entered, then it should hit a breakpoint. So you see here, uh, here we got a DWT trap and WinIdea has stopped at the entry of HSM task A. So in this way, you can use DWT hardware comparators as a breakpoints on HSM core. So briefly, this was all about uh, performing debug on HSM core. And now let's move to next use case. Now we are going to talk about our next use case where I will be discussing uh, timing analysis uh, of HSM core by the approach where uh, we are using uh, instrumentation. So instrumenting the HSM code and trace via MCDS data trace. Here you see on the HSM core, I have defined uh, two tasks, task A and task B. This is my helping macro, which is basically I'm using uh, HSM bridge module registers to create a memory window. And I have picked an address in LMU RAM. Similarly, you see on Oryx uh, that uh, I have given a, a variable name here, uh, which is defined at this particular address. And as a part of instrumentation, I am marking the entry and exit. So for task A, it is one zero at the exit and definitely similarly for task b at the entry i'm writing two and uh, at the exit it is zero these uh, helping macros are basically performing data writes at this particular address so when this line is being executed it means we are writing two to this address and our aim is to uh, um, trace out these data writes uh, on oryx core now let me uh, show you the profiler XML file which I have created for HSM. So this is my uh, profiler XML file. And here you see I have uh, given uh, defined task A and task B. And this is my 
expression which I am going to trace it out. The profiler XML file is being added here, debug configure session. And uh, this is the application defined for HSM. And here I have added this. Now let me show you the basic trace settings. So I'm going to use hardware CPU options and I'm using on chip trace buffer. Now let me show you the analyzer configuration. So this is for tricore where I have just, uh, um, I'm interested in uh, tracing out the OS objects. Similarly for HSM, these are my OS objects. And uh, my chip does not have a SRI bus, so I'm using POBX for HSM data writes. So these are the basic main idea settings which we need. And now let's run the trace. So here are the results. We are able to trace it out uh, the two tasks which we have defined on HSM core. If you want to see uh, the further details, then go to properties and then here you have some time-based measurement. Otherwise, uh, click on this profiler statistics window. And then here you have uh, a different sort of timing level analysis available average time in max and uh, different sorts of uh, timing analysis. And here you also see we are able to trace out both CPU zero of Forex and HSM core simultaneously. If you want to do some uh, CPU load analysis, then you go here and go to CPU load, go for HSM and enable manually and select your idle task here. And if you press OK, then you should able to see the CPU load as the uh, trace recording is very less because I'm using um, on-chip trace buffer. So if you run for a longer time and then you give a longer time frame, then you will have exact uh, CPU load measurement as well. So in this way, you can perform timing analysis of, on HSM core using uh, this instrumentation based approach where I'm using HSM bridge module to create a memory window. And then uh, using that memory window, I'm uh, picking a uh, LMU RAM address and I am performing data writes and those data writes are being traced out using MCDS data trace. Moving to our next use case where I will be demonstrating how you can use sampling based profiling approach uh, for a course like Oryx HSM. So before moving to that, uh, there are a few settings which you need to know. So hardware CPU options and analyzer and you need to change it to operation mode to none from on chip. I have already done that and done uh, the symbol download and everything. So uh, my Rx, this core is running and as well as uh, HSM core is running as well. Our first use case is function load analysis. So basically uh, by sampling the program counter, our profiler calculates how the CPU load is distributed across all the functions. So let me open the analyzer of this HSM core and a uh, few analyzer setting which you should know. So I have already created PC sampling, but I will show you how you can do it. So click on the hammer and go to profiler and then click on new, new PC sampling and then just press OK and then it's done. So it's already done here and now core is running. So let's run this. Let's run it for some few more seconds. So if you click on profiler timeline, then you will see the load percentage. So basically task A is consuming almost 21%, main is 13%. And um, so in this way, you can uh, use uh, this PC sampling approach for function load analysis. Now moving to our second use case, uh, which is pretty similar to the first one, but instead of a program counter, here we sample the OS running task and running ISR variable. I have already created an analyzer configuration for this. So let's run this.
I will stop now and if you click on the profiler timeline, then you can see um, HSM task B is almost 17% and uh, most of the time it is in no task. And if you click at uh, the profiler statistics window, then you can see the similar results. And if you go for uh, right click and then you will have other uh, timing level details available here as well. Now moving to our third use case, uh, which is a bit different, but basically the idea here is to build a kind of oscilloscope for data signals in our system. So suppose you have some data signals or any variable which you are interested on HSM core and if you want to uh, kind of visualize it, then you can uh, create another analyzer configuration. I have already done it and I am trying to, uh, you know, find it out about my counters like my count one and my count two. So if you run this, then you can see how the data variable changes over time and just zoom in for more details like it is changing from 0, 1, 2, 3 and then going back to 0. So these are the uh, three uh, use cases which uh, can be performed uh, using uh, win idea sampling based profiling approach and um, this is pretty helpful on course like HSM. At this point, uh, I would like to conclude the webinar. Last 25-30 minutes, we have got to know about Infineon Oryx TC3XX HSM core. Us together looked at its uh, debug system and debugged the HSM code. Live demo part demonstrated the two possible approach, instrumenting the HSM code and trace via MCTS data trace and sampling based profiling approach, which can be used for timing analysis on Infineon Oryx TC3XX HSM core. I'm pretty hopeful that uh, this will be pretty useful for many of us. And in case of any question, please contact us and we will help you out. Thank you. Manish, thank you very much for giving insights and also for clarifying the question from the very beginning, how to do timing analysis on the HSM core as there is no ETM, ITM or TPIU available. So thank you very much. It was very interesting watching this webinar and this technical <coughs> training session. You're welcome, my pleasure. And let's come to the questions. We received a lot of questions and I would like to start with maybe the most important question. I think it's a very important one. Is there any way to recover the device if I locked it? Unfortunately, no. Oh, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's locked means you cannot access and then it's gone. Okay, so quick and dirty answer, it's locked, so no, nothing can be done except contacting Infineon and buying <laughs> yes. a new one. So <laughs> they will for sure happily sell you a new one. Uh, but from the technical perspective, it's not possible to awake it again. Yeah. Okay, then let's start questions. First in, first out, thank you very much for sending so many questions. I'll start with the first one how to flash the UCB configuration file in, in an ECU using WinIdea. Is it a script or something? Uh, during a live demo session, I have, de I have shown that hardware option and then you have a checkbox, uh, UCB programming. So if you enable that, then using that, you can do UCB uh, programming. And uh, yes, uh, for the first time, we um, normally recommend to do it manually. And but definitely using we have our Python SDKs and other uh, it supports other language also. So using that uh, you can write a script and everything can be automated. OK, thank you very yes. much. Next question. If WinIdea is attached to a ECU, normal, are normal secure boot features available and work or not? I think this was during yes. the, the demo uh, mode yeah. uh, part. Yeah, I mean, uh, you read the full question and then I will answer it together because he also wrote like, yeah. Ah, okay. Sorry, sorry. Generally, some debuggers do not allow hardware to work in secure boot because hardware always runs host and HSM core same time by default. So, sorry. Yeah, th th <laughs> this, th yeah this could be an interesting question because recently I was working with a customer and uh, one thing before answering, I would like to mention that, um, that in WinIdea, 
programming does not mean that you have activated HSM core. So what exactly normally we do, like we uh, download uh, Oryx and HSM code together, maybe uh, in the same ELF file or same hex file or S19 file, or it could be a different. But uh, after that, we do not uh, activate HSM code. So in that way, uh, what what uh, WinIDEA is looking for that it finds the HSM core, but uh, it does not find HSM core is activated. So normally you will end up in some trap or something. So in, in that way, what you have to do is first you need to download tricore core, and then uh, you need to enable UCB programming. Then you download HSM core. Definitely you have to uh, check again and again. You, you, you're doing everything right, and then you HS, then you activate HSM core, and then you are good to go. So. Yes, I mean, uh, everything you can do in WinIDEA, but um, you need to know the flow within WinIDEA that first you program uh, the tricore uh, followed by um, HSM and then you activate it. So in that way, if you do, then um, you are done with all the secure boot and features and everything will work for you. Else it will, you will end up in some trap or somewhere else and you will not know why. Yeah. And uh, if this was too much information, we can, of course, set up a, an offline yes. remote session <laughs> so yes. outside this webinar. So yeah. before you lock, uh, we prefer that we work together and uh, prevent us, but both of us from locking the chip. Yes. Yes. So thank you very much, Manish. The next question is, what will happen after 400 or 500 program cycles completed for UCBs? Is there any chance of breaking the device? I'm not 100% sure about this um, answer of this question because I know that uh, um, there is some limitation, 100 uh, cycles per UCB and overall some 500 cycles. So definitely after that, um, in my assumption, you will not be right anymore to those UCB sections and um, I'm not sure. I have to look or maybe um, Infineon is the um, best to answer that or maybe we can contact an offline answer. Yeah, that's yeah. Let's follow up offline. Yeah. I think this is. But also definitely, a uh, once the uh, writing cycles um, goes beyond the limitation, then definitely you won't be able to write anymore. Yeah. The next question is: Why sampling-based profiling doesn't give accurate results? Could you please elaborate? Uh, yes, sampling-based profiling. Our here, our goal is to get some stat statistical analysis first of all. It's not uh, replacing our trace. And uh, um, some mathematical term called Nyquist criteria. So it's based on that. And uh, the main concept is we are basically sampling for every uh, few microseconds. You know, it could be some 10 or 100 microseconds. And there are some possibilities or probability that uh, we miss some event. So in that case, uh, the missed event definitely results will not be accurate. So. That's why I have um, said, like, this is not a trace replacement. This is just to give you an, uh, the whole soul um, system idea how your system is behaving. And then based on that, you can make some assumptions whether your system is behaving right or wrong. So trace yeah. is still more accurate, but a real trace is not available on, on, on the HSM. So yeah. it's a good alternative. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there Thank are, you. I guess we have a dedicated webinar for this on our YouTube channel. So there, our colleague Armin has explained it really well. So if you listen to that, then you will have more idea about this. Yeah, absolutely. Check out um, the iSystem YouTube channel there. You'll find other iSystem uh, or iSystem, yes, iSystem and iSystem Infineon webinars yeah. about tracing uh, in a lot of details, how to do tracing on Infineon RX Trico microcontrollers. Thank you, Manish. The next one is how to synchronize both cores together, how to stop the HSM after a host reset. Uh, yes, there in our win idea, um, normally in hardware CPU options, there is a uh, checkbox called synchronize all cores. If you just tick that, then automatically uh, win idea does it for you. So in that case, all the um, cores will be in sync. And uh, there is an also option like hardware CPU option and cores, and then um, you need to enable that um, stop the core after reset. So if you have um, checked all the boxes, then um, your second issue will be also resolved, like how to stop HSM after host reset. So those things will work for you automatically. So th there are a few navigation within WinIDEA that you should know. And if you just uh, <laughs> check it, and then it will work for you. So it's uh, pretty simple. There is no rocket science behind that. WinIDEA does yeah. it for you. 
that's good. Uh, as, as, as you know, uh, the path uh, where to navigate uh, as you're working daily with WinIDEA, maybe this is also something we will explain also offline again yes. uh, via email. And uh, so then, then we can really give you the, the details again, where you find all these checkboxes. Manish said it's easy to find, so <laughs> don't worry. Yeah, yeah, just, uh, yeah, we will write you offline and definitely you can also contact us and then um, I can yeah, explain you better. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Thanks, Manish. The next question is, we still have two more. So we still have five minutes to go. If you have questions, feel free to send them. We still have time. Um, the next one is, here both core start the same time. Can you show with UCP configuration file secure boot enabled flash and HSM should start first, right? Yeah, there are, I guess, three questions <laughs> in the same line. So, <laughs> uh, so first one here, both code starts at the same time because I have I have enabled the synchronization. That's why it's like that. The second is, uh, can you show with uh, UCB configuration? Unfortunately, no, because uh, we must check the NDA whether you have or not. And because there are many uh, confid confidential uh, data datas are there, which we cannot share. That's why I have not um, demonstrated or shown in the demonst live demonstration part. So you write to us and then if we have um, NDA, um, valid NDA, then definitely we can tell you how to do that and what are the values. And uh, HSM should start first, right? My, maybe in my demo, but uh, definitely you can do that. You can run HSM core first and then it will, um, Oryx will also start because both are in sync. So either way you can do it, it's not a problem. And depends on your how how you have uh, configured your application also, so it, that also matters. And you just mentioned uh, the NDA, so a lot of information are under NDA regarding HSM, so we are not not allowed to talk about it here. But uh, send us an email to webinar at isystem.com, or if you already have a contact person at iSystem, send them an email and uh, then we can continue and as Manish said we need to first check with Infineon if you really have the NDA so it's a little bit tricky but it is like it is and it's nevertheless easy to work so a little bit more conf uh, communication is needed but that works yeah all right one question can you provide more details step to step to configure sampling based profiling um, I would request him to visit our WinIDEA website. Uh, there we have uh, pretty nice documents. Otherwise, you can visit our YouTube channel or uh, the third resort will be just write us an email individually and then maybe we can set up a meeting where we can uh, demonstrate how you can use a uh, sampling based profiling approach. So yeah, that will be the answer from my side. All right, then let's take the last question. Mm -hmm. So if you send us more questions, we will answer them definitely via email because then we are running out of time for today. The last one is, does WinIDEA has the capability to prohibit unintended access to secure areas which in turn lock the device? In short, can I blindly rely <laughs> on WinIDEA for a beginner working on Tricore HSM core to avoid such locking situations? <laughs> Tricky question. Uh, yeah, tricky question. So, mm, first question: Does WinIDEA capability? The, as I said uh, in our live demo, also, uh, we have a security checker module. If you go for reject programming, so if WinIDEA finds anything wrong in your download file, then it simply reject your programming. It will not allow your programming, and um, yeah, in that way, WinIDEA definitely helps you to uh, prevent locking. Second thing is, uh, can I blindly trust on win idea for uh, beginner working? So I, I would say if you are a beginner, then definitely you should read uh, first uh, the Infineon reference manual, how to create a boot motor header file or how to create other startup files. And if you if you think, uh, if you have any questions, then definitely either you can contact Infineon or definitely us. If you are working, if you are a win idea user, then definitely you can contact us. If you have, if you have a valid NTA, then uh, we will uh, we will help you out and definitely you can also rely on win idea 100 percent if you know the uh, if you know exactly what you are doing and how to do in win idea and then definitely you can blindly trust win idea and it will not lock your chip until unless you have written something wrong in your file and you yeah. activate yeah. hsm core yeah so, so it's definitely can, not recommended yeah. just starting but yeah. reading first the the yeah. infineon manual um would, would it also be possible to use the demo mode for this? So so you, you mentioned that at the very beginning? 
Yes. Uh, first, yeah, definitely. If you are a beginner, then you use uh, Vinidia demo mode, so you are not uh, downloading directly on hardware. So, um, yeah, you can you are download downloading it onto PC, and then you can check all the downloaded content through memory view. And if you think everything is right, then uh, yeah, you can do that. And yeah, you can definitely rely on Vinidia if you know the steps. Then there is nothing wrong. So if your code works, then Vinidia also works. So yeah, if you, uh, if if you, you have, have questions reach yeah. out to us yeah yeah all right then let's finish the quest uh, the questions for today and the session also because we are slowly running out of time manish thank you very much for answering all the questions for sharing your knowledge and giving us an insight into the special core thank you very much it was a real pleasure yeah it's my pleasure and definitely uh, thanks a lot to all of you for attending and uh, sabrina re really nice and yeah, my pleasure. That's it from our side. As we already said several times, I will say it one last time. Feel free to contact us if you have questions. Webinar at isystem.com or reach out to your sales or tech representative. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for attending. Bye and take care.